Oh, there! I shot one. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Lauren here, and I'm with my friend Judah Clark, who's Hello. actually, he's the one that convinced me to start my YouTube channel. So if you guys are thankful, you can go to his channel and leave a comment saying thank you. Oh, thank you, Lauren. Thanks for getting me started. <laughs> it's a good time. This is Christine. She's Judah. Like like, hey. <laughs> That's conditioner, guys. Don't get any wrong idea. And then this is Jose. Jose is a friend of mine from Miami, and he's also Judah's partner in the Florida Spearfishing Tournament. We're gonna kill it. We're gonna kill it. So guys, we're going for Wahoo today. We came here to a couple of wrecks. We're gonna jump in, see what we can find. We got a bunch, a bunch of bait, right? What do we have? Um, value. Whole and bunch of value. Squid. Well, that's not, that, Ooh, that looks nice. That's not that <laughs> enticing, but a bunch nice. of fresh value on there. Beautiful. We got a little bit of a late start. Jose and I had to go get some ice and the machine was taking kind of a long time. But we're here now, so I'm gonna suit up, get in, wish us luck. Well, I'm putting on the wetsuit that'll keep my body protected from the elements. I'll explain how we hunt for these incredibly fast fish called wahoo. These fish are found worldwide in tropical and subtropical seas and is valued for its amazing taste of its meat. One of the wahoo's other names, ono, is Hawaiian for delicious. We also call them hoos. Biologists don't know the exact number of the wahoo population, but the fish appears to be abundant and isn't threatened by overfishing. We tend to find wahoos around deep shipwrecks, that we call wrecks for short, and we use shiny flashers to attract fish and bring them in close enough to take a shot. The safest way to spearfish wahoo is with a float and float line attached to your spear. This is the setup that my three friends are using today. When they shoot the fish, the spear will detach from the gun and stay connected to the float line that's attached to the big float that's floating at the surface. To avoid having too many floats and lines in the water, today I'll be using the reel on my gun along with a backup reel that I have attached to my weight belt. That way, when I shoot a fish, my spear will stay attached to my gun's reel. I don't really recommend using this method since it's more dangerous, so if you have a choice, definitely use a float line and float. All right, so we're all suited up. We're ready to jump in. Jose is gonna be driving first. Christine and Judah have their float lines out. I don't know if you can see their floats back there. I'm gonna be using my real gun. I don't know if you can see it there. He's gonna put us in front of the wreck, not uh, directly on top of it, because if he puts us directly on top of it, by the time we uh, relax and get ready for our dive, we'll already be drifting off of it because of the current. So he's gonna put us a little ahead of it, and then we jump in, do some drifts, and see what we can find. One of the first things I do when I jump in the water is I check my reel. I want to make sure that it's not too tight and it's not too loose. If it's too tight, you run the risk of shooting a big fish and having your gun ripped right out of your hands. And if it's too loose, you run the risk of it wrapping around and getting tangled and that's not a good situation either. Here I am about 60 feet deep. I came across this kingfish and I think I misjudged the distance because when I shot it, you can hear the reel line going and then all of a sudden you hear it stop. So that's a clear sign that it ripped out. That means my spear didn't go all the way through or maybe I shot it a little too low. It always bums me out when I don't land a fish because I really don't like hurting fish and not getting it. Next time I just have to remember to get even closer. I shot a kingfish, but it ripped out. What? I shot a kingfish, but it ripped out. So I reloaded my gun, dropped my flasher, and in came a wahoo immediately. Look at this guy, he took off. I didn't want to lose my flasher, so I had to dive down a little deeper to grab it, and then worked my way up, and I saw that it was taking a lot of my reel line, so I quickly attached it to my belt reel so that I could also have that as a backup. Jose, I shot one. I let the captain know that I had gotten a fish so that he wouldn't run over my line accidentally. 
I noticed my line was getting a little loose, so I started pulling it in, and then all of a sudden, the fish took off again, so my gun went flying past me, and I knew that judging by the size of the fish, it was going to be a bit of a struggle. Sorry. You want to constantly be making sure that you're not tangled in your reel line because if a shark comes and takes the fish and takes off to the deep, you don't want to be tangled in there and have it pull you down. That's a really bad situation. You can hear the wahoo taking off again here. He's basically just dragging me through the water for the next, I don't know how many minutes, so I'll just fast forward through that part. When I finally get the fish in my hands, my first thought is dispatching the fish. I always want to kill it as fast as I can because, I mean, I really just don't want it to suffer. And once I'm sure that it's dead, then I go ahead and I cut the gills. There's an artery there that allows the blood to flow out so that it really, really improves the quality of the meat. And I highly suggest that everybody does it. All right. Nice one, right? He came in right to my flasher. Yeah. What's that? Can you grab him? Do you have gloves? Do you want to buy the tail or the gill? We're eating good tonight. <laughs> Guys, look what I got. Yeah. It's my first, my first Florida Wahoo. This is a nice one too. Look yeah. at the size of that guy. She's a beaut. beaut. Beautiful. All right, so since I got a Wahoo, I'm going to start driving so that Jose can get in the water. And we'll see if these guys can get some too. Wish everybody luck. All right, guys, I got my Wahoo, so everyone's jumping in now. So guys, I dropped my, my throw flasher and just was letting it float there and then a freaking huge wahoo came in and I saw it from above, dove down and I plugged it right in the back and it freaking fought like hell. It took all of the line from my gun's reel, so all of that, which I think is like 300 feet. No, maybe even more. Yeah, I think it's like 100 meters and then it took line from my belt reel too so it was it was not happy but got it on the boat used my Rob Allen 130 tuna railgun and I used the drop barb on that the drop barb is this actually I'll show you what it is while they're in the water you see this system so this goes like that it's supposed to be flat but I can't do it with one hand but yeah, then it comes off, you shoot the fish, and it holds onto the fish like that. Very cool system. All right, let's see how they're doing. There's Jose over there. There's Jude and Christine. And look at Kimber. Hey, Kimber. When it's your turn driving the boat, you really need to be careful with other boats in the area. You want to make sure that your divers are safe and you want to also make sure that you don't run over their float lines. So you want to stay vigilant. You want to make sure that once someone has a fish that you can be right next to them real quickly just so that in case sharks start coming around that you get the fish out of the water as soon as possible. 
one thing that i always do is i always keep an eye on the divers i don't want to run the risk of running somebody over accidentally so if somebody is calling me over i always make sure that i have everyone in sight so that i don't run the risk of accidentally running somebody over that would just be so traumatizing another thing i should mention is when you're driving you don't want to be jerking the boat around making unnecessary noise so if you're going to be moving you just want to like put it in gear lightly so that the props are moving but you're not making too much noise and scaring away the fish come on guys get a hoo. Guys, we got action. Jose's float just went nuts. It started being pulled like crazy. We're gonna go up to him, see what he got. I'm sure it's a hoop. It's either a wahoo or a mackerel. Let's see. Should we pick up Judah? I don't know if you can see it from here but what I'm getting all excited about is you can see Jose's float it's not flat on the surface of the water right now it's what we call tombstone so it's facing straight up so that means that there's a fish definitely on his spear and it's pulling the float so that it stands up I need a holding shot. I need another shot. I think he needs a second shot. Oh. Take this, I'm gonna jump in. Hold it, okay. Where the f is Judah? I'm gonna lose it, I'm gonna lose it. Okay, that was an ordeal. Jose needed a second shot, and he was like, where's Judah, where's Judah? But Judah's too far from him. Judah's all the way over there. And he's got, he got dragged over here. So I threw on all my gear, not all my gear, but I threw on a mask, snorkel, and I was throwing on my fins, and I loaded my gun and was gonna jump in to take a second shot, but he got it. He pulled it up, and he secured it. So now he's just gonna bring it back to the boat. All right! Do wahoo! Woo!
I grabbed it and it, and it went off. I grabbed it with the in, in the gills and it took off the the, the slip tip. I barely got it. Yeah, I'm coming. No, no, don't do that. What? Because if it touches you, it cuts you. That was intense. <laughs> After that, we did a couple more drifts and we weren't seeing any wahoo, so we decided to go back to the house so that we could relax for a bit and then head out again in the late afternoon. I hope you enjoyed that video. I'm saving the rest of the wahoo action for part two. And I'm also gonna show you how to fillet the fish. I'm gonna introduce you to a couple new friends. If you guys are interested in what gear I use, I link it down in the description. And guys, I did things a little differently this time. I talked a lot more. I kind of went into detail of what I was thinking and why I do certain things. So if you like that, let me know in the, in the comments. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.